Welcome. Welcome to a new mini lecture series. Uh, today, we're going to talk about dynamic range. What is dynamic range? We've heard about it, um, say, in the uh, TV sort of uh, commercial, or we sort of see it in camera settings and such. What is dynamic range? For example, when we look at dynamic range, we talk about uh, dynamic range in photography. We talk about the value between the darkest and the brightest spot in the scene or captured by photographic medium. Okay, so captured by uh, a photographic meaning uh, the use in camera. Okay, for example, for the use in camera, the maximum range of light allows to fall on different photographic media. For example, heliograph, daguerreotype, film, Polaroid, or digital sensor, whatever that medium can be able to capture. Okay, and each medium would be slightly different. Dynamic range is measured in exposure value. For example, we call it EV or stop in photography. One stop of light or one EV of light, it can be measured among the three variables of an exposure. For example, aperture, shutter speed, or ISO. ISO means the light sensitivity of film or a digital sensor. Okay, what is an aperture? Aperture is the hole or an opening through which allow light to pass through. We measure in f stop or f number. Most optical lens use blade to form an opening. For example, you heard about like six blade or nine blade and so on and so forth, or seven blade or some uh, lens use three blades only. Okay, so a number of blade is, for example, you look at this lens, it are roughly about six blade. Okay. So uh, for example, even opening a pinhole camera uh, by a uh, by a pin, okay, using a, with a pin camera, that's also an aperture, okay, but the, the, uh, the hole is really tiny then, okay. And F number, usually you see this soft number, F1.4, F2, F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16, F20, and two, and so on and so forth. What exactly are those? F is the focal length of an optics, for example, a 50 millimeter lens or um, you know, a 200 millimeter lens. That's the focal length of an optic. And D is the diameter of the entrance pupil, which is the little hole, okay? Which allow light to cover through. So aperture diameter by a factor of the square root two or about 1.4, um, hence a half of the area of the pupil. Okay, so the reduced number of pupil you increase the depth of field and increase the number of, you know, the F number. Okay, so um, each incremental change uh, of 1.4 is equivalent to one EV, one stop of light, okay? Aperture also control depth of field. So what are these number? Let's take a look at the number uh, 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 separately. For example, you see this uh, one stop of light, 1.4, 2.0, 2.8, 4, 5.6. Okay, this is all uh, uh, separate by one stop of light. Sometimes you see some other numbers. Sometimes you may see something, say a uh, uh, number like a 3.5, sometimes you see 6.3. So 6.3 uh, is not a full stop of light. The 6.3, for example, is in between 5.6 and 8, maybe a third of a stop of more than 5.6. Okay, so uh, let's look at this number and how this is uh, calculated. For example, 1.4 and 2, okay, is 1.4 multiplied by square root 2 became 2. Okay, and 2 multiplied by square root 2, which is 1.4, equal to 2.8, and so on and so forth. Okay, so each stop is at uh, the difference is 1.4 uh, multiplied or divided. So a bit more complicated uh, than, um, uh, than other uh, sort of uh, um, measurements. Okay, so this is one soft light. So if you look at two stop of light would be easier. Two stop of light would be square root two multiplied by square root two, which became two. So we see like two soft light, 1.4 and 2.8, that's two soft light. And then two stop of light there, two stop of light there, two stops of light there, and then the other way around two and four, that's two stop of light. So make, that make it a lot easier to understand, okay? Four and eight became two stop of light, 
and eight became 16, so on and so forth. So next one would be 32 or the lower one became one then, for example. Okay, so you know how this F number is calculated then. Okay, so, uh, so this would so be, be a lot easier to understand because it's approximately uh, divided or multiplied by two. Okay, for example, uh, why we said this approximately, for example, uh, 15 of a second, if you divide by two, that should be uh, 7.5 uh, of, of, uh, of a second, okay? So, but it's really difficult to, uh, to calculate. So make it, uh, so for round up the number became 1.8. And then you see 60 of a second, if you divide by two, there'll be 120 of a second. But however, never use that, okay? You say 125, okay? And then multiply by, by two, then, then it, you know, that became uh, one uh, 250 and then one 500 and then one thousands of a second and two thousand of a second, so on and so forth. Okay, so approximately would be, would be good enough. Okay, it doesn't need to be exact. Okay, all right. So we have also a B uh, for long exposure and uh, some lenses have T shutter speed, which uh, so when you click it open and then and I click and close. Okay, especially designed for long exposure. Okay, then the other reciprocal factor that'll be a bit more complicated. We'll talk about it in details when we talk about film or long exposure later, and the curve is not straight. Right, so uh, for ISO, it's pretty standard. Uh, uh, you're gonna, you see it, it all the time, and it, it's the standard of light sensitivities, also known as ASA or DIN, when we're using film like, like you know, 20 years ago. Okay, popular film speed are 100, 200, 400. Uh, we have uh, used film like say uh, ISO 25 or I've used film, uh, you know, say 1600, but those are not very normal these days. Okay, so uh, this should really change uh, this multiple of two, uh, it's equivalent to one EV or one stop of light. Okay, and for film speed, the higher the ISO, the larger the grain size. We talk about grain, uh, uh, grain is like the, uh, the, when we talk about the film, it's like emulsion. And then um, the grain, okay, film grains, okay. Uh, and when we talk about digital for digital sensor, the higher the ISO, the higher the noise level. So we use a different terms to talk about film and digital, okay. And then there's some chart to compare maybe with, with the, uh, they are all equivalent, they are the same, okay. But uh, if you uh, um, reduce a certain speed to say uh, one half of second, uh, the image becomes quite blurry. Okay, if you increase the ISO to uh, 25,600, then it became really grainy. Okay, so it's of show you the rough effect when you uh, change the perimeter of um, an exposure. Let's look at some artistic work. Uh, this is a photo shot by Ansel Adams. You may heard about him or you may have seen this photo uh, uh, when you are young. Let's take a look at that one. Okay. And then, okay, this is one famous one. Right, okay. Right, so this is Ansel Adam himself. He used to shoot a lot of landscape photo in black and white, and he sometimes shoot uh, the photo on the top of his car, okay? He um, modifies his car so he can put a camera on top. Okay, so that's him with a smaller camera and this small of his uh, normal camera on the left. Okay, so Ansel Adam was an American photographer and environmentalist. This black and white landscape photo of the American West, especially many national parks have been widely reproduced on Canada's posters and books. Okay, you may have seen them in Canada's before. With Fred Archer, Andrew Adam developed the song system in a way to determine proper exposure and just the contrast of the final print. The resulting clarity and depth characterizes his photographs. So when we look at Andrew Adam's photo, you see a lot of clarity. You see everything so clean and clear, okay, with a lot of depth. Meaning you can see, uh, 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 you know, um, um, sort of like from uh, light to black uh, to to dark, you know, in a dramatic way. Okay, so Adam primarily used large format camera because their high resolution help ensure sharpness of the image. Uh, he used large format 
a, 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 a firm. For example, if you mostly use eight by 10 firm, the, sh uh, the sheet of firm is eight inches by 10 inches, which is about the size of an A4 paper. Compared to uh, the film size you normally would have seen or used would be 35 format, a uh, 35 millimeter, uh, you know, eight by 10 would be, would be like at least 30 to 40, 40 times bigger than the 35 millimeter format. Okay, so which means uh, there are a lot of um, information on that piece of film. Okay, so uh, uh, he prefer pure strict photography over pictorialism. Okay, and he published three books. They are all technical books uh, called the camera, the negative, and the print. The song system is a photographic technique for determining optimal film exposure and development. So not just he take the picture, and then he have to um, make sure the picture is properly exposed, meaning the negative have to be perfect. And then he uh, manipulate the print in a dark room. So this is the whole process, capturing the film, uh, 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 taking with the camera, a specific camera, and then uh, make sure the exposure is correct, and then uh, manipulate the print in a dark room. Okay, so you move the uh, process from, um, you know, uh, from the creation to the production. Okay, a systematic uh, a method of precisely defining the relationship between the wave photographers, visualize the photo subject uh, and the final result. So you talk about visualization. Okay, what is visualization? I'm gonna talk about it in, on, on the next slide. Okay, although it's original black and white film, the songs are also applicable to roll film, both black and white and color negatives and reversal and traditional photography. We can apply some of the uh, concepts uh, into different media as well. So song system, visualization. Uh, visualization is an expressive image involved the arrangement and rendering of wherever seen animals according to a photographer's desire. Meaning a photographer need to control where um, the image and how the image look, okay, when he, before he take the shot, okay. Achieving the desired uh, image involved image management and the control of image values. Okay, how we do can do this and talk about it next night. Okay, the song system is concerned with uh, control of image values, ensuring that light and dark values are rendered as desired. Anticipation of the final result before making an exposure is known as visualization. So he need to understand the scene, how he's going to shoot and change aperture before he take the shot. Okay, and then for song system. Uh, it divided into 10 different songs. Song zero will be pure, pure black, meaning have no detail, okay? Anything beyond uh, uh, song zero, uh, anything darker than song zero became all black, okay? Nothing nothing there, okay? If it's song 10, then uh, pure white, okay? Anything that is brighter than a song 10 will become pure white, okay? And then song two will be texture black, meaning uh, the dark area is gonna have texture, okay? For some, uh, have some details uh, in the shadows and such, okay? And the lighter song with texture, for example, texture snow would be on song number eight or song number nine, okay? Gliding snow, meaning the snow is gonna be like quite reflective, okay? So it became song nine or so, okay? Still, uh, song uh, eight and nine have certain details, then it's not flat, uh, 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 white and such. So, for example, if there's a scene like this, if Ansel Adams see a scene like this, he would picture it in black and white. He would first make the shadow of the scene, like the darkest area uh, of the scene, into a song two, uh, 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 um, you know, into a song two. So, what is the darkest area that he wanted with a uh, texture? For example, those trees, okay, under the shade. Um, he want the, the tree have texture and he want to make sure those area are in song two. And then he want to make sure say, uh, some of the brighter area uh, have texture as well. So maybe the, um, the snow, he would make sure the snow is in song uh, eight or song nine, depends on uh, if it's, he want to, how bright he wanted it to be. 
So he would uh, measure uh, all the different area within the photo he want to take with a light meter, a spot light meter, meaning it's only have like one degree. So we can measure every single thing uh, in the scene, okay? Or in the scene he want to capture, okay? He measure every single elements. So he will uh, draw um, all the elements onto a piece of paper and then mark down all the different uh, area um, that he find um, those area would be important. For example, I want the snow to be in zone four and then you take a measurement and then put that exposure there. So it's like really fine control of, of what um, uh, the final outcome would be. He would imagine and uh, try to visualize it before he take the shot. Okay, do all the measurements and such. And such technique, for example, uh, would work great for you know a, a landscape photographer because landscape photographer so after they set up camera he had a lot of time to take a shot he can you know he can for some wait for an hour for the right cloud to come by or something okay but if you are press or a photojournalist will not have time to do all this measurement so this is for something that doesn't move as much and you have a lot of time to measure and then he's uh, shooting uh, at the scene with a large format camera, which means he can just shooting one sheet of film at a time. He can uh, easily uh, uh, make all the adjustment uh, in a dark room afterward. Okay, but if you're shooting one wall film, uh, sometimes it's being more difficult. Okay, uh, sometimes we shot the whole row in different lighting condition, then you can really uh, control as much as uh, uh, for some as Ansel Adam because he's doing one sheet of film at a time. Okay, so technique, for example, uh, if the EV in, uh, in scenes between song two and song nine is over X star, maybe it's too contrasty, okay? Maybe it's too bright, uh, too, uh, uh, the sun is too bright, and the shadow is too dark, um, you know, he probably would uh, overexpose the film in camera and then underdevelop in dark room to make sure all the stones are fall into um, the right, you know, right part. Okay, so for example, if the EV in the scene between stone two and stone um, eight or nine um, is below six stop, meaning, for example, uh, if we shot the the, uh, the scene say in the springtime or in the morning, um, uh, the scene had a low contrast, and uh, maybe it's an overcast day or a cloudy day. Then maybe he then underexpose the film in camera and over develop the film in the dark room to increase the contrast. So um, uh, the uh, light area in a dark area will fit into the right zone. He'll do a lot of calculations. Okay, not just take a picture, make one measurement, take a picture. He do a lot of calculation. So that's why he needs a lot of time to say to plan out what we're going to do, how much stop we're going to underexpose, and how much stop he want to, for example, uh, overdevelop uh, in the dark room. Okay, so he can uh, do all the calculation carefully and mark everything down uh, before he go back to you know his dark room and such. So once again, the song system is concerned with control of image values, ensuring that light and dark values are rendered as desired. Meaning, um, if for example, if uh, um, the, there's too much white area, um, then you know it became uh, less interesting for him. So he'll make sure um, the light area have texture and the dark area have texture as well. Everything is very detailed and um, and clear. Okay, so uh, uh, when the audience look at this photo, you're going to be able to see you know from light to dark in a very subtle way. Okay, in all full 10 stops of light. And then you also do a dodging and burning in dark room to further fine tune the print result. Okay, so not just taking a photo and then in the dark room, you're gonna further manipulate the, the, the uh, photo into the, um, into a, 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 a desirable most of the result that you wanted. So for example, dark range, when we talk about dark range, for, for, when we talk about black and white film, we say, there are about 10 stops of light, okay? 
But for example, for movie film stock, meaning uh, the film that make movie, uh, a company called Ari that makes uh, uh, movie cameras that uh, claims a, a direct range of 13.5 stop with the Alexa, meaning with the film camera, uh, using uh, movie films, okay, moving images film, not uh, a still camera, but movie camera, uh, they can capture a 13.5 stop of light, which is felt even higher than uh, black and white film, black and white negatives. But a uh, color still film have more contrast, for example, um, that does have lower dimension range, about five to seven dots. Okay, for example, uh, color uh, negatives used in film industry would have like 13.5 stop of dynamic range. However, uh, film that your parents or you uh, use when you are, um, say, um, you know, uh, taking a picture of uh, a traveling photo uh, 10, 20 years ago, uh, those color still film will have a, a slower, a lower uh, soft time range, for example, in five to seven stops, okay? Which means the photo more controversy and more appealing to uh, your general public, okay? So, and for uh, for digital, raw format can achieve over 14, st uh, 14 stops and up. And human vision is kind of strange, okay? Human sub change and everyone is different, okay? So there's not a really accurate way to generalize it, okay? So, so human vision range from 10 to 16 stop. How come human, uh, 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 that range of for human vision is kind of, kind of low, uh, because when we when you think about when we're looking at a scene, uh, our head moves. So when we look at the moon, we see all the detail on the moon, right? But when then we look down to the ground, look down uh, uh, in in a dark night, we can still see shadows, because we move our head when we combine the information in our head to create a high dimension range photo. So image in our head, okay? So that's why the human vision, so uh, uh, a bit more uh, dramatic and people are not aware that uh, uh, they're looking at different things at different time, okay? So human vision, uh, if your head is fixed, then maybe if you look at the, the sun and look at the, the, the uh, a shadow of a tree may not be able if you adjust for the, the sun, then the shadow of the tree becomes really dark. You won't, won't be able to tell the difference. But if your head moving and looking at different uh, different thing in, in, in a scene, then your head soft see the image in a, a, in a high dimension range of so way. Okay, so however, uh, two media cannot be compared directly since the tonal curve uh, response are quite different. Okay, for example, uh, uh, we're going to see in the next uh, slide, you can see uh, 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 the curve. Some curve, for some human, if human curve is straight, then um, the dimension curve of um, a film or for digital are quite different uh, than each other. Okay. So let's see it. Okay, for example, uh, we look at this, a uh, human vision is, for example, human eye response uh, per in terms of uh, light, if it's a straight line, then you see a film has a sort of an S curve to it, meaning it's a bit more uh, dramatic, okay? And there's like a, a, a sort of a slower sort of roll off on the highlight area, okay? And then sort of, and then you see certain area, you sort of scatter uh, uh, quite uh, uh, complicatedly uh, all around when under shadow. Okay, so it's not very consistent even in film or sometimes in, in uh, 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 so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, you cannot compare so film and digital directly because they look different. Okay, and it's not like everything is one, one stuff light, so the curve is not straight. Right, so for example, we took a dot time range, we look at, look at camera, uh, say uh, found in the uh, 217, had a time range of 15.2, Soft stop. Okay, so by this point, uh, to the darkest point, that's like 15.2 stop of light. Okay, and it's like a, a red helium of 8K camera. Okay, made in the 2016. 
Uh, even today, we look at uh, some current camera, you see it's like 14.7. Uh, a stop of light when you're doing your landscape, okay, dynamic range, okay. So it's a bit uh, different, okay, uh, as, uh, 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 than the film camera, but still, um, the difference is not huge, okay. It's like less than one stop of light in terms of uh, dynamic range. So, okay, so for example, when we talk, typically try to shoot a nice scene with a digital camera, uh, even though uh, uh, certain Highlight area are mostly brown if you shoot normally, okay. Uh, I.e., no detail. So, for example, you enlarge it, you see, uh, like, uh, uh, there's like an LED wall, have no texture at all, and then you see the the uh, um um uh, the highlight area of uh, a certain uh, 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 area in the building. It's like all all blown, all white without any texture, okay. Uh, such cannot be recovered, even shot in raw mode, and if shot underexposed, there'll be too much digital noise in the shadow. Okay, if you are uh, uh, shooting the, the scene, uh, for some under two stop of light, uh, under two EV, and you may be able to preserve the highlight, but the shadow became really uh, uh, grainy or really noisy. Okay, so what we're going to do, so uh, we can uh, shot uh, more than one photo and combine that later in Photoshop. Okay, it's called a menu XDR. Okay, uh, photo with Photoshop. Okay, for example, uh, we can manually uh, shot everything on a tripod with long exposure. For example, uh, ISO 200 FA to reduce number of people or number of car because it's a long exposure. Uh, uh, you, there's people walking on the street. Um, it became buried. You can't be able to see them. Okay, and then we shot say two sets of more than five photos. One set in normal exposure. One set in uh, minus two to minus three EV with exposure compensation. And then we open the two set photos separately in script, statistic, or, or medium. Okay. Oh, so, so let's do it now. Okay. Let's do number uh, three now with Photoshop. Okay. So. Do it now, open up Photoshop. Okay, for example, we open up Photoshop, we open it in script mode, and then we open it with statistics. Okay, so with statistics, and then you're able to, for example, I separate the files into three folders. Okay, so for example, I browse those files, say, um, okay, um, let's do it. From the, from the beginning. Okay, for example, uh, do one with uh, plus one exposure. Okay, I see that all this photo. Okay. Right, and then uh, there's also, uh, if you're shooting with a tripod, you can ask the Photoshop to attempt to automatically align, which should they put together nicely, uh, align uh, one on top of each other uh, by pattern recognition by Photoshop. You can, you, without a tripod, you can also do it, but, but the result may vary, may not be um, um, too good. So we just lift this, we can click this, but it will take a little longer. Okay, let's do it now. Okay, so, and then we changed uh, the stop mode to median. We have more than one photo. Okay, and uh, I adjust all the photo uh, beforehand. Okay, so just take a look. Okay, so what it's gonna do, You're going to look at all the files, going to uh, uh, open up separately. And then you see like certain uh, uh, photo, they are like streaks of light, you know, uh, I mean, tail light in, in the back. So you get see a strip of light. And then, uh, and then when, the, when the median mode is done, you won't be able to see any of them. Okay, because I shot different shot in a, a sort of a different way. Okay, so I see some of the shot had sort of a tail light, and maybe sometimes you see headlight. Okay, you see trick, trick of them. And then I shot more than five. Say I have shot one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. I've shot nine photos on a tripod. Okay, with this same set. And then after the median mode is done, you won't be able to see all the streaks because what median mode does is uh, picking 
in the same pixel in the same area of the photo, that uh, what pixel gonna appear, what sort of information, so appear more often. So for example, oh, now see, okay, no streak, okay? If you uh, click on this, you can un, uh, open uh, or, or see, uh, you can, you can uh, see them separately, okay? But then see, there's no person there, okay? There's no streaks of light, okay? If you open it separately, say if you open them separately, say open this separately, you're gonna see each one have a you know a different look to them. For example, each one will separate them, you see them one have some streak of light, and you then see some shadow there, meaning some people walking by, right? You see, you see a different sort of like uh 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 uh, uh, uh you know, a tail light there, and then you see sort of like, uh, uh, you know, different light there. Okay, so each shot is different. Okay, some shot may be lucky, there's no, no person around, but they, oh, there's some, some headlight over there. Okay, so it's sometimes really hard to avoid. Okay, in a city, there are always people and uh, there are always cars around. Okay, you should shot with without cars. Okay, so. Okay, sometimes you see a person there, you know, staying there, uh, doesn't move, so catch a, a shadow, so a ghost-like image there. Okay, so that's normally what happened. But if after you stack all this photo, like nine photo together in a median mode, then let's cancel it. Then, oh, it's all clean. There's no person around. But you see all this blown highlight area. There's an LED wall there, and then you see a certain area. The, the white had no details, became flat, or flat black. Okay, or just a one color. Okay, so we're going to do another um, set of photo again um, in. Let's open up another mode. Okay, let's do scripts. Okay, statistic. We open up another folder. Awesome. Okay, with uh, say minus three stop exposure. We open all of this. Okay, then uh, we could uh, create uh, 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 another photo that sort of uh, you know have the same result. Okay, let's just do some fine tune before I do this. Okay, right. Okay, cancel. Okay, let's. Just open off them first. I want to do some fine adjustment before I do it. Okay, uh, open this. Right. Okay, let's open all this. I copy all the setting, uh, the same among the two set of photo. Or well, some of this, I, I find it a bit too dark. Maybe I want to increase exposure a little bit before I do the merge. Okay, so on the ex increase exposure a little bit. So you see a bit of texture there. Okay, you see the light with texture. Okay, and then maybe you can uh, even add a bit of noise reduction as well. Okay, so I would probably do uh, details and uh, add a bit of uh, noise reduction to reduce the number of noise in the shadow and the highlight as well. Okay, kind of noise reduction, I do a little stronger, make sure there's no. Uh, color noises. So I'll do a little bit of that. Okay, the image became cleaner. Okay. However, uh, some of the dark area will not be used anyway. Okay, so I make sure they're all consistent. And then I, uh, after it's done, I say it's done. Okay, now I saw open the statistic. Okay, I, I, I modify the setting a little bit for the uh, underexposed photos. Okay, so I do this again, script mode statistic and then median and then browse all the files okay and then ask photoshop to open this one two three four five six seven photos and uh in a stack mode okay so attempt to automatically align so uh, it's not necessary because i shot everything on a tripod that uh, should be all aligned properly uh, even though sometimes may, maybe there's a car drive by a heavy truck or something that may shake the ground a little bit and move the uh, tripod a little bit. 
Uh, that's some may not happen. Okay, sometimes you may want to do it, but you know, most of the time it's not necessary. Okay, but anyway, let's do it. Okay, there you go. Okay, and you see this photo. Okay, again, let's check it quickly. Oh, okay, it's still still you know, open up all the seven photo that are shot with uh, under say under a uh, uh, two stop a three stop of EVA sort of exposure compensation. Okay, still opening up. Okay, so okay. Right, and then using the step mode to solve. Uh, it take, will take about a minute or two, so it's not really a long time. Okay. There you go, it's done. Okay, so you see the image is clean. There's not, uh, you can see the highlight area with the texture. You can see a TV screen have some sort of information. Okay. So it's not completely blown, and we can copy and paste the photo, copy and paste on to exactly the same photo. That should be aligned properly. Okay, let's see if the line is properly. Okay, that's by reducing the, oh, it's slightly off. Okay, let's, let's make sure it's aligned properly. Okay, something very strange. It's weird. That should align properly. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. There you go. That should align properly. Let's see. There you go. Okay. So we enlarge it. You can see it's aligned properly. Okay. So then we can quickly look at channels. The channels is uh, the information. Put together, combined together, say RGB, combined together it became the color image that we see. So, we look at the channels. Uh, the one that had a high contrast, I say, would be the blue channel. Okay, and then we duplicate the blue channel. Okay, the duplicate blue channel, we can um, change the contrast a little bit using curve. And change the contrast a little bit. Make sure I the uh, the dark area, meaning those, uh, uh, those are the area that will not um, shine through um, the photo. Okay, so I'm, I'm adjusting the contrast. So only the light area will come through the photo. Okay, so I'm gonna change uh, adjustment like this. Okay, and then command click this channel, which means it's low section. Okay, and then, I uh, I use add layer mask on top. Voila, it's done. Okay, when it's hundred percent, it's look like this. Okay, let's see how they blend in. Okay, so you see, you can see all the details can blend in. Before that, you don't see people see all the um, details, right? But then if you put it together, all we can see just like oh, there are fans, you know, in the highlight as well. Right, the wall had uh, uh, had certain color. Okay, it's not just a flat area. Okay, there's like uh, there are tile tiles, you know, on the wall. So you see all the details in front. Okay, so that's how you sort of create a high dynamic photo. Before this is all white, right? Yes. And then we can add certain area to it. Okay, and then how much uh, 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 information? Um, uh, that you like, you can change the opacity. Okay, maybe I want only just to add a little bit detail, but not too much. I add a little bit. Okay, now you see a little bit of detail, but not, uh, uh, but not too, but still you can see uh, all the texture of the fan and everything. Okay, just a little bit would do. Okay, you see a bit of tiles on, on the floor, uh, on, on, on the wall. Okay, you see a little bit of texture here and there. Okay, and then you see a little bit of uh, a light area over there. You see the textures and, and such. Okay. Okay, all right. So you can see everything sort of aligned properly. Okay. Right, 
and then the, it's almost almost done, right? You can create high, uh, uh, um, you know, high dynamic photo. Most of the time, we do something in the last is we sort of add a bit of fur to the mask. Why? Because sometimes when you take photo at a different time, uh, maybe wind blow or something, uh, there might be leaves and tree that may be, you know, not very sharp. Okay, because you know, as we you know other sort of elements to change. The, uh, the the scene slightly okay so so we uh, add a bit little bit of fur to um, to um, uh, to the mask okay make sure to blend in nicely okay I see a different area okay so there you go you see it sort of gives you a better result okay so a little bit of fur okay that would do. Okay, for some little bit of blue, there you go. And then you sort of blend in uh, much nicer, okay? And we use uh, sort of artifacts. Okay, so there you go. Okay, you can see uh, all the uh, walls have nice texture. Okay, so that's sort of done for the demo, okay? So you can do sort of a high dimension photo with a few steps, with a tripod, and uh, with a camera and then take uh, photos separately. Okay, let's go back to um, the PowerPoint. Okay, okay, clipboard too big to export. Okay, that's fine. Let's go back to clean looks. Okay, so uh, we were at uh, point number three back then, open up two set of photos separately in strip, state, statistic, and median. And then we align the darker photo on top of the other one. And then we observe the three different channels, pick the channel that had the the highest contrast and then come on kick the channel and then uh, well you can even adjust the contrast a little bit uh, with um um you know um uh, uh adjusting level or adjusting curve okay the different ways to adjust contrast we can talk about all these uh, details later okay uh in uh, later episodes okay not now okay all right so uh we come on kick the, the channel and select the uh, uh, a section is highlighted, and we add a layer mask on top layer, and then add a lower level blur to the mask, and then adjust the opacity to the most desirable result. Then we have a, a high dynamic range photo uh, uh, with Photoshop manually. But Photoshop can do this automatically, but I find the result not very interesting. Okay, so we can we sort of do it uh, separately. Okay, but uh, however, I I don't quite like the the result. Okay, uh, so. Um, you know, um, so that's why I prefer to do it manually. Okay, so, and then when we talk about uh, diamond range, what do we learn? We learn different uh, medium, say uh, color negatives or black and white negatives or black and white film, okay, uh, have different diamond range, okay? For example, a, a film can maximum have 10 stop of light, again, a diamond range of 10. For example, a color negative may be five to seven, some, somewhere around there. And then a uh, color film for movie cameras would be say 13.5 stop, okay, maximum, okay. Um, and digital, different depends on different made. These days is all over like, uh, you know, it's already better, better in terms of uh, uh, um, higher than a um, than, uh, 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 kind of film use um, by the movie industry. Okay, for some, most digital cameras this day can have like 14 stop, you know, of um, diamond range, mostly. Okay, so, um, so um, you know, uh, what can we learn and how do we uh, manipulate and try to find the best result? For example, if you look at another, a photographer called uh, Gregory Christen, he shot dramatic photo color with uh, color negatives or color positive. You can see all the detail, shadow and light with a lot of texture. Okay. And created sort of, uh, you know, scenes at night that have a lot of detail. Okay. Using film. Okay. You can create this sort of like, oh, the slow bone highlight is uh, the shaders, a lot of details, right? So you see, oh, uh, 
uh, different color as well. Okay, look different color as well. Okay, you can see all the texture and details in photo, right? Okay, all oh, this. Okay, it's dark, but you can still see a lot of detail in the shadow. Okay, look at this scene. Okay, it's quite dark. It's quite dramatic, uh, but still there's some uh, some detail are lost in this area, in some of this area. But then uh, there are uh, uh, that certain areas so of in silhouette, but then you see everything so quite detailed. Okay, so this scene as well, this guy is uh, trying to uh, grab something, you know, under the sink or under the shower. Okay, there might be um, something really dark going on under there. But how does he do it? Okay, we look at a scene like this, like a rainy scene, but then uh, you can see the guy shoot and still black and dark with texture. Okay, so Greg Christian make all this beautiful and settling image of American life that can quite a boost of 50 people to produce. So for example, he would use a lot of cinematic lighting, make sure uh, he control um, uh, the, the damage, make sure uh, the photo exposed properly, okay, by using um, artificial light. Okay, he adjusts the, uh, the exposure of the scene with care, careful calculations. So um, the scene render to the effect that he desire and he use a lot of people to help him do it. Okay, so that's a bit of interview over there. If you're interested, you can search his name and search uh, for um, the articles as well. And how he uh, sort of uh, uh, do or, or make his uh, sort of like uh, photo shoots. Okay, so, so we understand, for example, uh, 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 Color negatives has sort of like a lower down range, but we can still show you know, as much detail as possible with a uh, amount of control by um, artificial light, for example. Okay, so an artist are not limited by the technical aspect of a medium. Okay, don't be limited by the technical aspect of a medium. A professional artist understands the nature of the medium push the boundaries, finding better way to go beyond the limitation. So uh, uh, for some Ansel Adams and uh, uh, Craig Free uh, Christian, they all have find ways to overcome the limitation of medium and show as much uh, as you wanted uh, with um, careful controls. Okay, so I, I hope you find this topic interesting um, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.